Dana has also twice nominated for the actor Best Direction in Television for How Zat and Paper Giants, The Birth of Cleo. And Dana has directed many of our great female TV protagonists, such as Claudia Carvin's Dr Alex Christensen and The Secret Life of Us, Nina and Offspring, Fryony Fisher and Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries, and Ita Buttress and Paper Giants, Birth of Cleo. So, as well as many male protagonists as well. Um, Dana, like Kate, some of your first directing was on The Secret Life of Us, and Amanda Higgs really did a lot to develop yes. new directors on that show. What were your early professional experiences of directing like, and what were the challenges? Um, look, I think because I had been working in the industry as an actor, um, and I probably came in a bit older than, than, than Kate, I, I kind of had been battered around a little bit before I got to that place. And I, I think that was a great help of just having you know, kind of... I was very vulnerable, of course, but not as much as I had been when I was a young actor coming into that sort of stuff and, and, and fighting a few battles there. Um, I think there was an assumption that you don't know what you're doing, that you're young and you're female, so you make the decisions for this person. And, and, and so you just have to... I felt like I had to navigate my way through that. And it's interesting that when we talk about likability of characters, there's also likability of yeah. yourself as the director on, on set and that political place that you find yourself in. So you're weaving around and, and it's very political, finding out who thinks you know what you're doing, who thinks you don't know what you're doing. OK, so I'll stick with that person. I'll make an alliance like Survivor over here and then I'll do that <laughs> over here. And you just navigate your way through slowly. And it was also, I mean, I... I love having this job. I, I, I hope I get to do it for a long time because it's kind of helped me, my personality as well. I just went, just make the decision. It's not because you're some legend. It just has to be done. And it's not an ego thing and I, and I won't look proud or up myself. I just must do it. And that's happened, helped in my life as well. You go, I don't care, you first AD bloke, misogynist chap who thinks I don't know what I'm doing. I, no, this is what we're doing. Yes, yes. Yes, and we just kind of move forward that way. And I just learned over the years the confidence to, to do that. But it, it was tough. But I, I think uh, similarly to Kate, I think when I came in to directing television, it was a fortunate time. I think the producers that I was working for were looking for performance-based directors. Mm -hmm. So I just I had been an actor. And they were looking for women to tell... Uh, stories from a, a female perspective because I think people are aware that the audience is 52% female. Mm. So that did help. Mm. Yeah, mm. Uh, and it, more on t television. Mm. Um, yes, and, and I, I think, I mean, we all might be jumping all over the place mm. here, but I have enjoyed the male stories that I have told mm. as much as the female stories I have told. And I was sitting in... Um, having a meeting about how's that, about Kerry Packer's war with all the people from Channel 9, the whole network, and they were all freaking out about who, wh wh what's in it for women, who's going to, which women are going to watch this, and I was thinking, I didn't know what they were concerned about. One, because I truly believe, like um, uh, Helen was saying before about, the, and, and everyone was really saying, the fact that women skew themselves to watch through male eyes. I think they've been doing that since the invention of film, if not theatre, for however long. I think it's almost like a, a, a mutancy in our chromosomes that we can do that at this point. And I, I think... So I knew that all the women were going to be watching How's That, but what I did know is that, and I think a lot of female directors do this, is that I would show those men in vulnerable positions. And I think women want to watch men and see their vulnerability. We were talking about sideways. And you cannot be more vulnerable um, than Paul Giamatta's character. And so I, I, I knew that I was going to take Kerry Packer and make him vulnerable and show his pain. Same with all, you know, Ian Chappell and all those people. And that everyone would relate to that. Because I think... Um, but that's where I kind of come from as a director, is looking for people's vulnerability. Um, so I always knew that everyone would watch that show. You were going, I think you said to me that you, you knew you like to show the men on TV in the way that women want to see them. It, correct. I think um, we all have our 
fantasy about perfect guys and perfect men, and whether that be our brothers, our fathers, our husbands. And I think it's kind of you project. I mean, I think they are truly vulnerable. I think we are all truly vulnerable. But I think women want to see that side. I think when you go, I'm, I mean, I love action films. I, I love Die Hard is one of my favourite films. But I do think that John McClane is a vulnerable hero. <laughs> as opposed to, I'm not going to go see The Expendables because they all shit me and there's no vulnerability there. Mm. Now, that's where Rambo lost, went off the rails because he was so vulnerable in First Blood. Mm. He is not in the rest of it. And it's, you know, sends you to sleep. I've gone off track a little bit, I know, because I was that's talking right. about um, my experience at um, starting out directing. But um, I think I slowly learned that it wasn't a big deal just to make the decision mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and make it firmly. And, you know, and every now and again, who, you know, to tell the person that thinks you can't do it, to fuck off. Uh, I mean, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> now, as we alluded to, women are the dominant demographic for nearly every show on TV, except Top Gear. When you are working in TV, do you feel that female audiences are being catered for? Look, I, look I, I think definitely they are, um, and I, I, you know, I, but I think it can always be more so. And I kind of have to talk about my own personal preference and taste with the sort of things that I like to watch, like as a, as a viewer, as a punter. And I, I'm, I like action and I like science fiction and I like all that kind of stuff, Not which we don't see as much of it on Australian television. We don't make that stuff. And I think, as far as the genres I like, I think they're not catered to women, and I find that extremely frustrating. Um, you know, to see Star Trek, which is such a marvellous piece of work, and just to see the women in shit roles and with their undies on just makes me annoyed. And look, I've got to say, Game of Thrones, I just... This leads me to another point. I just stopped watching it after the first episode because I could not watch any more women's tits and get raped. I just went, that's enough. Gone. But I don't think women generally turn the television off. I think men do, but women don't. But look, as far as Australian television, I think you know, Miss Fisher's Murder is a, is a smash. Um, you know, I think the Paper Giants having its you know, female protagonist was you know, very successful as, as well. So I think here we're probably doing it more than overseas. And you have a strong feeling that as female viewers we should turn off if we... I do. Yeah. I just, I mean, you can't tell anyone what to do, but I, I was, I, my husband is a great litmus, litmus test for all this sort of stuff. He's not in the business, he's a gardener, and he is so attuned to three-act structure innately. And if I'm watching something, I think, oh, this is dragging a bit, I look across and he's asleep. It's just gone. <laughs> And, like, I'm sure he's, when he's seen things of mine, he's got a pin to stick in his hand so he won't go to sleep at any point. But we would start watching True Blood and at the point where there's too many men with their shirts off, you know, looking at each other lovingly, he's just like... <laughs> and he just turns off. And he, he's not macho man or anything like that. And I think men, if they... I think if they don't like it, it's off. Whereas if we don't like it, we keep watching because we... We go, okay, well, I'll, I'll just watch this bit now. I'll, I'll, I'll just it, you interpret it in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been watching science fiction films like that since I was a kid. I just go, oh, I love this, but I'm not in that film. I mean, I'm not Captain Kirk. I'm not Spock. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not Hura because I don't have legs like that and a really short skirt. So where am I? I'm not here. I'll watch it anyway. And just, I think that happens. And I think if we did start to turn off, when we didn't see ourselves. I think everything is driven by money and if, we, if, it, if you're not watching what you like, if, if you turn off what you don't like, it won't get made and if you keep watching what you do like, they'll make more of it. Mm. It's all about finances. I mean, I may be dreaming a little bit, but um, I think it's all about, yes, don't, if you don't like it, don't watch it. Mm. 